I think one of the primary responsibilities of this channel and the internet in general as it pertains to news is to provide stories and information that a lot of times don't get covered to excess by the mainstream media. And I'm, I'm going to try to do that right now. So over the uh, past week, and it, you know, as I'm set, recording this, Trump's State of the Union speech is currently wrapping up. It's not really that hard to figure out what I thought of it. You know, we'll talk more about that probably tomorrow. Um, but, you know, as I was sitting here yesterday and kind of reviewing the uh, tweets of people that I follow, uh, one of them was from Bernie, who was talking about Stacey Abrams being selected as the um, Democrat that would give the party's response to Trump's State of the Union. And, you know, Sanders for the last three years has given a response as well as in his role as an independent uh, he says Stacey Abrams is a great choice to deliver the Democratic response. I'm very much forward. I'm, er, I'm very much looking forward to her speech for third year in a row, following the Democratic revival. I'll be on Facebook Live, Twitter, and YouTube to respond to Trump. So keep this line in mind. He says following the Democratic rebuttal, following not concurrently with it, just after the Democrats give their response, I'll give mine. Um, that, that line is very important here because when you go and you watch, or rather when I start showing you some of the comments that have been left by a lot of the people uh, who have you know manufactured this new um, McCarthy era type of conspiracy theory, you know, uh, it, it all segues into it. Uh, the next one is Siskin. Now Siskin, I'm a lot more familiar with. She actually wrote a... Uh, an article about maybe six, seven years ago where she admitted that the only reason she voted for McCain over Obama was because his running mate had a vagina. So she said, hey, let me turn off my critical thinking skills. Whoever has the crotch that most resembles mine, uh, you know, as part of their ticket, I'm going to back them. So that that's already let you know this person's uh, intellect level or lack thereof. And her response to the story of Sanders delivering his State of the Union uh, response is why is he talking over the black women our party chose to speak for us? This is disrespecting black women, the most important reliable part of our base. He can speak another night. This is, is Stacey Abrams' night. She was the one the party chose. Nope, this is not his night. Um, so she is now claiming that Abrams owns the night, that no one, no Democrat should be allowed to discuss or talk about this for the remainder of the day. They have to wait a whole 24-hour period before they can speak. And is apparently confused as to the speech that Sanders wanted to give or he's planning to give in a, about 20 minutes or whatever being uh, after the one that Abrams is giving. So therefore you can watch both or neither at all, which theoretically if you if you hate him as much as this <laughs> this individual is claiming to hate him in this comment, you would you would probably not watch his speech. But again, they have their obsession with him, just like how Fox is an obsession with AOC, so they, they can't get enough of these people that they want us to believe uh, they don't they can't stand. All right. I hate that I have to do this today, but there's been a sort of personal thing that relates to the show going on the last 24 hours that I want to tell you about, because it is once again just this is the worst type of stuff that I have to deal with as host of this show. Um, I and the David Pakman show are now under attack by a so-called left wing activist, really sort of a centrist Democratic activist. And this came up out of nowhere yesterday with no warning. And quite frankly, um, I, I need everybody's support here. So let me tell you the story from the beginning. Indulge me uh, just for a few minutes and everybody will be caught up back in December of 2018. A woman named Amy Siskind tweeted on her Twitter account, quote, I will not support white male candidates in the Democratic primary unless you slept through midterms. Women were our most successful candidate. Biggest Dem vote getters in history. Obama 08 Hillary 16 white male is not where our party is at and is our least safe option in 2020. Now, of course, the biggest Dem vote getters piece ignores that when the population grows over time, you would expect candidates to get more and more raw votes. But forget about the math issue. To me, the idea that was tweeted here is the opposite of progressive. She is saying that on the basis of race and gender, 
she's ruling out supporting certain candidates, white male candidates. That's terrible. I don't agree with that. Now, a side note, Amy Siskin was a big Hillary supporter in 2016. That's sort of her placement within the Democratic Party and the left. Um, uh, and, and that's fine. She's part of the Hillary wing of the party, uh, which uh, she's perfectly well allowed to do. And that has nothing to do with the criticism that uh, I responded with. So at the time I replied, isn't there something not progressive about preemptively dismissing a candidate based on their race and gender? I feel like there's a word to describe that as a progressive. I won't be jumping on board with that idea. And at the time, remember, this is 2018. Amy Siskin responded to me, quote, secure men are always at the forefront of diversity. They don't see their place or status threatened by lifting women, people of color or people of all sexual orientations because they are comfortable with themselves, suggesting I'm neither secure nor comfortable with myself or uncomfortable, you know, lifting women or people of color. And I responded once again, that's exactly right. And I'm 100 percent on board with that. It seems to be the exact opposite of preemptively disqualifying candidates on the basis of race or gender. Now, tons of people saw this exchange and started retweeting it. And by the next morning, Amy Siskin had blocked me on Twitter. The next day I tweeted about this, saying the intolerant left is small but horrible. Amy Siskin said she wouldn't vote for anyone white or male in 2020. I pointed out this is the definition of racism and sexism. I respectfully questioned her approach. She blocked me. This sent her into an absolute rage. And in addition to having blocked me on Twitter, she sought me out on Facebook. At the time, she found me on Facebook and left me the following message on my personal Facebook account where she said, quote, remember, I was teaching as an adjunct at Boston College uh, shortly before this. She says, I called Boston College to launch a complaint that you should not be teaching young minds, but they said you do not teach there. I reported you anyway because you should not be invited back. May want to update your Facebook page to reflect reality. Now, of course, I taught at BC in 2017. Facebook reflected that uh, as an adjunct. I'm not permanently employed BC. So if you call them during a semester where I'm not teaching, they would say he doesn't work here right now. And so she was right. right? These are her words. She said she called BC and told them that I should not be teaching there. This became quite a story. Joe Rogan and Bill Burr um, talked about this exchange that I had with Amy Siskind on uh, Joe Rogan's program. I later went on Joe Rogan's program in June of 2019 and Joe and I spoke about it and we put Amy Siskin's tweet that we Joe's producer put Amy Siskin's tweet up on the screen. Um, and then I never heard anything about it again. OK, that was June of 2019. It's been seven months until yesterday, completely out of nowhere. Amy Siskin appears on the David Pakman show Facebook page and posts, quote, you're a liar, David. I never tried to get you fired. I pointed out your LinkedIn page didn't even include an adjunct position and you were embellishing. You owe me an ap a public apology. You completely made it up to get attention. Now, as you can see, this is factually wrong. Notice in her post in December, she says it's my Facebook profile that misstated my position at Boston College. In her post yesterday, she says she was pointing something out from LinkedIn. So clearly she doesn't remember the post. Uh, I don't know which is accurate. Was it because of Facebook or because of LinkedIn? But then she went on to post to our Facebook page yesterday again out of nowhere. We haven't heard from her for, for six, seven months. She says, quote, someone sent me a link to an entire segment you did with that openly racist, transphobic, misogynist Joe Rogan in which you trashed me for something made up. I never called Boston College. I never tried to get you fired. This is a complete fabrication you made up to get attention. You must publicly apologize for this lie and smear. Now, let me remind you, Amy herself posted on my Facebook page, uh, quote, I called Boston College to launch a complaint that you should not be teaching young minds, but they said you do not teach there. I reported you anyway because you should not be invited back. And this is where it's getting ugly. She is now making threats, saying yesterday, I will give you today to apologize. Then I will be sharing what you did publicly. Now, of course, I did nothing wrong, so I'm not going to apologize. But people who know Amy Siskind have been warning me she will go after your advertisers. 
She will go after the stations that broadcast your show. She will lobby free speech TV to drop the David Pakman show. And she has resources behind her, those sort of centrist establishment Democratic Party resources. Now, anybody who looks at the fact says, uh, sees in December of 2018, she said, I called Boston College and told them not to have you teach there. She might have been lying back then, or she's lying now, right? We don't know. I reached out to Joe Rogan about this since it relates to the conversation we had on his show. He's aware of it. I've been in touch with our legal team. We just don't know what to expect right now. And it's a really tough situation because she does have friends in important places in the Democratic establishment. She has the type of support that we might call moneyed legacy Democratic resources. So I am telling you this not so that you go out and send Amy Siskind tweets or attack her. In fact, let me be clear. Do not do that. That is not what I'm asking anybody to do. That's not going to help us. What I am telling you is we may be up against something big here. This past February, I did a video called Ultra Feminists Get Mad at Sanders for his Supreme Court, or rather, State of the Union speech. And it was about a couple of weird chicks on Twitter that got mad because Sanders followed his yearly tradition of responding as an independent to the State of the Union by the president, whether it was Trump or Obama or Bush, whoever. And one of the people who reacted in a negative manner was this Amy Siskin person who you actually saw talked about at length by uh, David in the clip that I showed. And, you know, it's really funny to think that this incident when it happened uh, and I saw Siskin's really weird message, it never dawned on me to think about David or because I, I knew at some point last year about the exchange she had with her on Twitter that she had called up uh, Boston College and tried to get him in trouble, even though he doesn't work there. So it didn't work. But it's just funny how these people, it seems they have a knack, uh, a penchant for just screwing with others. And, you know, everything he said about her comment was correct. If you went on Twitter right now and you said, I will not vote for someone if they are black and they have a vagina, you would rightfully get called racist. And if you happen to, uh, you know, be a man, you would get called sexist. There's this thing that, that we have a lot of weird um, traits of where people will basically say, well, because we're talking about the majority, uh, referring to, you know, whites being considered the majority in the U.S., uh, we're able to basically get away with being racist. We, we can trick people into thinking that we're actually not saying something that has a serious problem with it by implementing discrimination toward people that supposedly haven't faced it in the U.S. or that wouldn't be expected to face it. But that, that's what it was. So when he responds to her, he doesn't call her racist. He doesn't call her sexist. He just rebuts her point. He doesn't call her out of her name. He doesn't use any profanity. It's a really tempered response. And in response to that tempered response, she blocks him and then tries to screw his life up because he decided to write something back to her. Now, when that happened, she should have went from having, I don't know how many followers she had. Every single person that uses their account should have unfollowed her. You, you don't, and you know, someone will say that's cancel culture, but we're, we're talking about people who are so thin skinned that they will, if you simply disagree with something they say, try to ruin your life. And and no one thinks there's a problem with that. There's, there's no serious revolt. There aren't people who go on her page respectfully and say, Hey, that's really crazy for you to tell this, to, to try to get this man in trouble because he said something on Twitter that you didn't like. And then she go, and, and look at this clip in the clip. He has the message that she said on Facebook. I called this school because I wanted to get you in trouble or I reported them and told them about how you said whatever. And after this happens, she, co she has the goal to say, Oh, I never did that. You're lying on me. You lied on me when you met with Joe Rogan. And 
this is like imagine David, right? Imagine you're David. You do an interview in June of last year, and you you know respond to it, all the questions. You basically, because you do interviews all the time, you are you you make public appearances all the time. So this interview just kind of is a, oh, it was a nice little fun experience. Let me put that off into my memory bin, and then over half a year later, you got some clown who comes and says that interview you did this past summer slandered me and I demand that you give me a public apology. And it's, and before someone says, oh, well, maybe she was offended by the things he said, there's a difference between fact, opinion, and slander. If I came on here and I said that David was, I don't know, an alcoholic, and I have no proof that he is. That's slander. Now, if I say it kind of in, you know, my, my point is that when you have the proof of the message, which he shows on the screen during the video, and you have this woman saying, you slandered me. I mean, it's, it's literally denying reality. It's, it, she is, for all intents and purposes, the Trump supporter that we get annoyed by, the one that doesn't take into account facts, reality, anything like that. Because you have the proof of her writing something insane. And she goes, oh, no, that wasn't, that, that, that didn't happen, that didn't occur. And hey, because of, you know, if we were to give her the benefit of the doubt, we could say, oh, enough time passed where she probably forgot about writing that. But we didn't forget. Told you, you, you can look at most people when you argue or disagree with them online. They leave you alone. You, you really have to be a big, huge figure, you know, like David is. I mean, in, in terms of just the online, you know, someone with almost 800,000 subs is pretty huge. For someone to have sustained interest in screwing with you. But in this instance, you have someone who tried to get him in trouble outside of, the, you know, this political realm and then gets to pretend that she's the victim after making an attempt like that on his career. And I guess what is so disturbing is there was a user I used to uh, watch the content of. I left them in the past because they said some stuff that I thought was kind of weird. But one of the things they said I really liked was that when you become larger, when you get more subs, when you, I guess, broaden in terms of name recognition, whether that's through any of the methods I described, so getting more subs or more views, you have a larger target painted on your back. So if David was some person who didn't have almost 800,000 subs, he probably wouldn't have this woman trying to, you know, basically make a name for herself by attempting to cancel him both in real life and possibly through his online persona uh, over a tweet. And this is really scary because... I said before, the best policy you can have toward people that piss you off with this political stuff is to just leave them alone. This is why I don't watch any of the conservative people unless someone I like puts up a clip of them. Um, this is why I don't talk to any of them because it, it's just not productive. And this is an example of why it isn't. I'd also like to point out that there are some people who have taken to criticizing David over his perceived lack of leftism or progressivism or whatever positions they think he has. But I, you know, I've made this point before. I try to defend individuals regardless of political belief if I believe the circumstance calls for it. When people were trying to cancel Shapiro, or rather when he was having his advertisers pulled last year, I did a whole stream about it. I said, this is stupid. Um, because they signed him up knowing that he had those positions. And, you know, now that people are pooping their diapers, they're going to sit here and, uh, you know, get upset over this and, and decide to now make this be something that matters. So with David, it's less about, oh, this is a fellow progressive commentator and more about, I don't understand why anyone, after attempting to respond to someone in a civil, on topic manner, should have their entire. Uh, life attacked by whoever they responded to simply because of their disagreement. I guarantee you if he had said, 
oh yeah, you're so right. Screw those white men running for president. She wouldn't have had a problem with it. But I told you that that's how people just don't think about this stuff to the extent that they should, because this is the kind of, these are the types of things that make up the intolerant left of how, if you don't have the same position as them, you're like evil and we need to take you down and you're as bad as the people that you support, even though you don't have any power, you know, any actual uh, influence on office holders. So, you know, this is just another example of that. And hopefully she can be, I guess, ignored and without actually doing anything harmful or any more harmful than she, she's already done.